And this video is geared towards the beginners. Um, so in this video, we're not going to be using a CG machine. We're going to use what we were given, our two fingers. Welcome back everybody to another quick tip. I'm James and today we're talking about center of gravity or CGing your RC aircraft. So I have before me the Freewing T33. It's going to be perfect uh, for, for this video and again this video is geared towards the beginners. Um, so in this video we're not going to be using a CG machine. We're going to use what we were given our two fingers. Uh, for the most part, I always CG majority of my aircraft just using my fingers, um, and you as a beginner should learn how to do that as well because CGing your aircraft is crucial to making sure you achieve the best performance possible um, in your aircraft. When, you're when you hear a CG or you hear a plane is tail heavy, or nose heavy, that is gonna cause the plane to fly differently or not as it should. And the rule has always been um, a nose heavy plane flies poorly and a tail heavy plane flies once. So making sure your CG is correct before you uh, before your aircraft ever, ever leaves the earth is imperative. So let's get started on how to do that. The things you're gonna need for, for this are really, you're gonna need the manual of your aircraft because every manual is pretty much gonna give you a location to achieve achieve your CG, you're going to need a ruler, and what I like to use sometimes is a pencil. People can use a little bit of tape, or you can eyeball it uh, once you get your measurements. That's up to you. Now, when it comes to CGing aircrafts, there are really two different ways to do it. When you have an aircraft like this, which is a low wing model, so a lot of times as well, your warbirds are going to be like this, Mustangs and Spitfires. What you're going to do is you're going to turn it upside down to CG it, but then you have other types of aircrafts, like things like this that are high wing. When you measure, you want to do it from underneath. So we'll show you both uh, techniques, but again, they're virtually the same. And uh, again, it's going to help you in the long run. So let's get this going here on the uh, T-33. First things first, I'm just going to toss my battery in. I'm not going to strap it down yet. But now I've already looked and we can have the manual here. The CG uh, from the manual says it's 95 millimeters from where the wing meets the fuselage. So all we do, find our uh, ruler here and we want to measure 95. That's 95 millimeters. I'll put that about here. And then when I find the spot, that puts me right about here, right on this panel line. So I don't even really need to mark it with a pencil, but I like using pencil because I could always erase it, gives me something to see. But uh, we have this, this uh, divot in the wing here. This panel line is gonna be where I want to CG it. So now once you know the CG location, then you wanna place your battery in. And now if you don't know where it goes already, that's fine because again, that's why we CG. If we find it to be tail heavy, we could slide the battery forward. If we find it to be nose heavy, we could slide the battery back. And then we could figure it out and uh, we'll get there. But let's show you CG. So now we have our battery in place. Everything that's going to be in the aircraft is already in the aircraft. Obviously, you don't want to go adding weight after you CG because that'll change uh, your CG. But basically, I take the aircraft. I'm going to turn it upside down. And I'm going to look for the marks that I have made. I know it's that panel line. And I go about an inch away from the, uh, from the spot on here. And then I am going to put my two fingers. And you can see right now we have a tail heavy aircraft because the plane wants to leave, uh, you know, the tail is going down and wants to leave my fingers. So what you'll do, turn your aircraft back over. We will go inside and we're going to start sliding. So what I'm going to do is take my battery and I want to slide it forward. So I'll undo the strap. And we're going to inch it down. And we're going to do it again. So now we move the battery forward. And the funny thing about CG, especially in RC aircraft, a little goes a long way. If you move the battery forward an inch, it could, this might be tail heavy, this might be nose heavy now. We're gonna find those two marks where we had it the first time. And then fingers right there. That's about a perfect CG for this aircraft. 
Now, one thing you could see if you're looking at my fingers, what you want to do is try to get it on the balls of your fingers, so the very tips of your fingers. You do not want to do it with your, uh, with your fingers at flat or more surface area because that could give you a false idea of the CG. You really want to put the tips of your fingers, if you're a beginner, like that, and that's going to basically get you to where you need to be. And then for something like a high wing aircraft, again, you're gonna do the same measurements from the manual. You're gonna find where their CG is recommended. For the uh, Mercury, it's basically right where the, uh, right where the wire is on, on this aircraft. So you just place your battery in and you'll do it from underneath the wing. You wouldn't have to turn this plane upside down, if you will. And you can see we're achieving a good CG there. So that's basically how you do it with your, uh, with your fingertips, guys. Um, and again, perfect for a beginner. You can always go out and get yourself a CG machine. Um, some of our bigger balsa aircraft will come with a string uh, type of CG machine that connects to the spar of the wings, uh, but you don't really need all that. For the most part, um, a beginner, when you're dealing with aircrafts about this size, your fingers are going to be more than enough and uh, it's free. So <laughs> that's, the best, that's the best thing about that. But guys, if you're a beginner to the hobby and if you're a seasoned veteran, CGing your aircraft, you already know, uh, is very important and um, it should be something you do before you ever let your plane leave the ground because we've all been there where we, where we didn't do it and uh, problems have arose. But guys, thank you so much for joining us for this quick tip and I'll see you next week right here at Motion RC.